Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Hello everybody and welcome to the Guy, Sharon and Clint podcast. Our AMA guest today was the wonderful politician Jacinda Ardern. Hello. Welcome to the studio. Thanks so much, guys. We've kept you around um, for a special um, intro to the podcast as well. So this is a bit more of you than regular listeners would have got. As Guy said, more time to screw up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, so I, I, I don't know if I should reveal this or not, but I'm genuinely quite interested because I used to be um, Jacinda's neighbour. You I used were. to live uh, two two floors below her. That's right. Was I a terrible neighbour? Not at all. Although I did find it very unusual that you used to leave your basketball boots out <laughs> in the common area. Yeah, that in is a strange. hallway. Did you want them stolen? No, no, because they smelt bad. That's why. Oh, <laughs> right. that's, we all knew that's why they were there. Um, Could you smell and them? And that's why no one stole them. Could I you suspect. smell them? I, I, I don't. I never leaned in. No, never curious? I never gave them a sniff. <laughs> We've got some other questions that you couldn't answer while we were on air, Jacinda. Someone wants to know, because you admitted uh, during the AMA that you were single, uh, do you think that men are intimidated by your success and intelligence? Well, I, I try not to dwell on the reasons for my singledom. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't, I don't know. There's probably, yeah, I don't isn't know. Win, isn't Winston single? He's a crack up. No, he's. Are you suggesting maybe <laughs> he's a snappy dresser? Winston, yeah. he's, a, he's, he's eighty years, years old. Um, he's a crack up. And, and no, he's not. He's not. He's he's happily shaken. I bet you yeah, he's got like a young blonde girlfriend. Does he? Um, she's she is blonde, but she's not um, young. <laughs> do, do you think <laughs> of, really nice? Actually. Do you think if Jacinda yeah. was a male politician and she was single, would she be getting the same questions? Is it weird? I would is still it, ask. Are no, you held you know, to different in, standards being a woman and being a politician? Do you think? Oh uh, well, I wouldn't. You know, I mean, when the Herald ran in a, a banner when Nikki Kay and I were running against each other that said "Battle of the Babes," yeah, I mean, you wouldn't no, see but that. That's, would you? No, but that's yeah. why you get it as well. It's because you're you're a good looking politician at the same time. If we finally had a good looking male politician, he'd get the same t- same thing. Like, do you, <laughs> you want to go out with Samantha Hayes? Do you want to? Can we shake out with somebody? I, I would. Though, I that, would just like to point out, Jacinda, that I would have asked you that if you were a male because I ask Guy how often I try and ask him about his love life, and he's not a woman. <laughs> okay, every day. From but the, I guess. The point is, that does it affect how we do our job? And no. it doesn't. A, no. a decent politician, it doesn't matter how you look. Right? Um, from the text machine, hey, have you ever had another full time job other than being a member of parliament? Yes, yes, I have. What'd you do? Um, I worked in the UK um, as. Well, that was, sounds dodgy. Yeah. You didn't even want to say what it was. What job did no, you do? No, I was just trying to get the shortened version down of what I. Uh, the last thing that I did was I worked on a review of policing in England and Wales. What was the, um, what was the first job you had? Uh, my first ever job, I worked in a fish and chip shop. And oh, what was yeah. and what was the worst? What was the worst job you had? Worst job, a uh, tea fowl demonstrator at farmers. <laughs> I had oh, to what? I had Great. to fry stuff in front of people. Oh, Amazing. That, yeah. is, that is not good at no, all. It's not good You've at got all. an illustrious deep fried um, background, though, don't you? I've fried <laughs> You're an expert. And me. Yeah. Do you know how to fry? I got another question. Uh, someone says, can you come down to Treasury and say hi? Because no other minister ever comes and says hi to us. I'd love to go into Treasury, but I'm opposition. They probably wouldn't let me through the door. Oh, just, very just, good Just point. go in and say hi anyway. Yep. Just do That's it. Be, nice. a, be a rebel. Um, uh, do you accept climate change, and how are you going to stop it, if so? Yes, I do. The short version is a decent emissions trading scheme as a starting point. Okay. We don't have a decent one now. Okay. So you're no carbon tax then? Oh, well, carbon tax does a similar thing. So okay. either way, what we're saying is that we do have to put a price on carbon. Yep. Have you ever thought about switching parties? No. Because no. when we studied um, like parliament and stuff. switch but teams? I well, know, Shane Jones team. did. No, he just left. But then did he? Like, he left and got he, a job. Who is he working for now? The, the, this is, I've obviously got so many questions. I'm a, I'm a failed political science student, so I could ask all day. But one that's coming a lot from the text machine, just to wrap it up, is what are your thoughts on Winston Peters? Well, yeah, I mean, you can never, you can never really, you never say die when it comes to Winston. He just keeps going. <laughs> And going. And going. Yeah, and going. He's and a going. very savvy politician. I don't always like what he says, but he's a savvy politician. He's um he's got very sparkly eyes. Hey, just, Sharon's got a crush. No, I love I, I don't like some of the stuff that Winston Peters does, but outside of politics I think he's a crack up with sparkly eyes. <laughs> Hey, Jacinda, <laughs> thank you so much for our, uh, answering our weird sparkly eye questions. We really Thanks, appreciate guys. having you. And I best invited of luck. to be described as snappy with sparkly eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm real tired today. I think I've asked the dumbest questions I've ever done. <laughs> I'm not usually this dumb, okay? Sharon's first question was, so you're with the uh, Labour Party, am I right? <laughs>
<laughs> that was make awesome. Sure, because I have made that mistake before. That was fantastic. Was Thank you so much, the wonderful Jacinda Ardo. You'll hear more of her during the podcast. The AMA section's about halfway through. Uh, plus, also in there, a new edition of What's in Guy's Mouth. And we try to wish Irene Van Dyke a happy retirement. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. Here's the podcast. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. What have you awkwardly had interrupted or ruined by inappropriate swearing? If you listened to the Paul Henry, watch the Paul Henry show last night, you might have seen the most horrific lady stealing the mic in a live cross you've ever seen. We've managed to get audio of it, but it's not great audio because TV3 have gone to great lengths to hide this, I think. <laughs> so what you're hearing is someone who's recorded it on their phone from TV, then uploaded it to Facebook, and then from Facebook, Chang has recorded it into the Edge mainframe. <laughs> so we'll play it out now. And it's been censored, but this is what went live to air last night. Adelaide wouldn't make a very good capital the basis that next to bloody nobody lives there. It's like a pussy. Now, what was that? That was a rude lady. We'll delete that before we play the program. Well, they didn't because it was live. <laughs> and that's the thing is that famous saying that is now famous because that lady has said is because there is a man from Australia and I think another guy in the States as well that's been doing this on news crosses and you and you jump in and you're like, she's going to... and the, and. You have to say the words on a live cross, so it's kind of become like an internet thing that someone has now done back home as well. Oh, wow. Well, it was the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. I think Chang was supposed to um, beep out the P word there as well. He hasn't quite gone to the <laughs> full censorship, but she comes on and she just says three swear words that make you shiver. And uh, and we decided we'd probably give uh, Paul a call and ask him about it. Should we it? give him a call now and see what the feedback's been like? Okay. Yeah. Who's that? Hi, Paul. It's Guy Williams here from the Guy, Sharon and Clint Show. Yes, fantastic, Guy. Good to talk with you. <laughs> I do not believe you at all. We just briefly wanted to ask you about your 9 and 10 game that went a little bit wrong last night. Did it go a bit wrong? <laughs> you had a woman interrupt, steal the microphone and uh, drop an F-bomb. Okay. I can't talk for long because I'm just about to go into the Sky City Underground car park. <laughs> but I'll say this. I'll say this. We were live from the boxing in... In West Auckland. <laughs> You've got to be prepared for that kind of shine to go down, haven't you? It went terribly wrong. We're sorry it happened to you, Paul, and uh, well handled on air, mate. You did, a, you did a good job. Thank you, chaps. If you'd see like you the chance to swear on our show right now, feel free. <laughs> you see, you can't even get people to swear on your show. I can't stop them from doing it on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Guys, we had someone at our wedding that did it, and during the speeches, someone made a joke or two about Timaru, and he was from Timaru. So he stood up in the middle of our wedding reception and says, Stop joking about Timaru, or I will effing stab you! <laughs> so we've got someone on the phone who thinks they know the, um, the, 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 do you call them the victim or the perpetrator? The perpetrator. The criminal. Candace, tell Candace. us, your friend was the girl that swore on the Paul Henry show. Yes, she was. That, so, that, that's totally something Hannon would do. <laughs> so were you with her when this happened, or were you? did you see it on TV? No, the first I heard about it was this morning. Um, I logged onto Facebook, and there she was, posting that she's famous. Oh, and my God. The girlfriend that she F-bombed on was saying how gutted she was she didn't get all the answers. But, um... Yeah, I can't say it's something we usually do. <laughs> so she's actually proud of herself for becoming a viral sensation for being a potty mouth. She is very proud. She's put it on her Facebook page. It's her 15 minutes of fame. But um, I think Jesus. alcohol was involved and, <laughs> you know, people get a bit... Um, Sweary. West Auckland, eh? You can't bloody beat hey, it. Hey. I've been waiting for this. Let's not totally just rest Auckland because I bet you that you could have got the same reaction from people in South Auckland. Only the language probably would have been a bit more colourful. But Wait, hey, hey, oh, hey, let's well, not well, just well, South well, Auckland. Well, Don't well. dirty the good name of South Auckland because yeah. you've got some no, white trash like crackers over there in West Auckland. Gets a bad rap, because but, you because know. they do bad things like this, mate. <laughs> I actually personally think it's really funny. Um, <laughs> it's a good effort, and we're very I proud know. of you, West West, Engl- West Auckland. Kia kaha, mate. Thank you. I think she's <laughs> a, I think if anything, she's just shown her true colours. I Karen, said, Kia kaha, mate. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. I just 
wanted to bring in for my friend and say she's not a horrible person and she's not. We you believe know, you. We've got to go home, mate. <laughs> We've got to go. All right, leave us alone. <laughs> Have a good day, guys. Love the show. See you. Thank you. Love you, Mum. Guy, Sharon, and Clint on the edge. Irene Van Dyke. What is happening today? <laughs> oh my God, he's Irene Van Dyke has retired from the Silver Ferns. What? She's been a Silver Fern since the year two thousand. In that time, she's won pretty much every possible title and accolade in netball. So it's a massive deal. Get this. She has played uh, 217 test caps with 72 of them being when she was playing for South Africa. The rest of them all for New Zealand. She's been playing at an elite level for 20 years, which is bloody unheard of in the game of netball, guys. And she is retiring today. But good news is... If you're a fan of the Central Pulse, she's still going to play for them next year, but no longer for the Silver Ferns. This is actually absolutely huge because for many New Zealanders, it's, it's, it's a shame and it's a reflection on um, where we value netball. She's the only netballer that most people have even heard of. Like, if you oh, ask for a netball player. And Maria Tutaia, that's the no, one but I, I re- She's like royalty. It's quite amazing. She's the ambassador and has been for this game for such a long time. She's been a Silver Fern longer than Richie McCaw's been in All Black. Yeah. She's been uh, playing netball since I was eight. Wow. It's a long time. I'm very old. Should we give her a call right now? Let's give her. Oh, hey. I feel like she deserves a good send off. She deserves it. And what better way than from the guy Sharon Clint show? The best way possible. <laughs> what a way to cap off your international <laughs> career than with a call from these idiots. Oh, She'll tell her grandparents, say, I got a call on my retirement. <laughs> She'll tell her grandparents or her grandkids? Grand, grandkids. Are and her parents. Hope she picks up. Hi, this is Irene. Sorry I can't take your call at the moment. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Have a lovely day. Bye. Hi, Irene. It's Guy Williams here from the Guy, Sharon and Clint Show. And I'd just like to say, I'll say goodbye even though I'm blue. Even though I'm blue. Even though I'm blue. Irene, I'll say goodbye even though I'm blue. Even though I'm blue, even though I'm blue, I read, I say goodbye, no, no, even no, though no. I never thought you'd break my heart. sha la 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 from the start. sha la 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 That's why I'm telling you, this is what I shall do. I said I'm back. Sorry, okay, sorry, that's, that's sorry. Enough. Where Sharon it... looks like she's going to stab me. Irene, we just wanted to say congratulations. You're a legend and enjoy your retirement, mate. <laughs> Woo! What a legend. Irene, I, I say, say goodbye. Okay, no, 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 Guys, no, 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 no. Sharon and Clint on the edge. Let's talk about Banksy. Okay. And not the Banksy that everyone cares about, the graffiti artist. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about Banks, the other baby. Banksy. We're going to have quite a political show today. We're breaching out. We're getting later on in the show. We're going to have an AMA with a well-known politician. But um, right now, the breaking news today: spoiler alert, guys! Anyone following the Banksy saga, the John Banks saga, he has been found. Drum roll! Guilty. Uh, For what? For what do you mean? That... Oh, it's bombshell. What? So explain what he's been found guilty of. He was in court, and if you'll know, it's been like a, um, a highly publicised court case, partly because that guy threw a bucket of manure on him, pretty classic, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> lol, and he was eating earwax in court. <laughs> he ate earwax. Double lol. Because Kim.com's hot ex-wife had to come and um, speak at the trial. <laughs> Okay. Kim.com was there as well. Of course he was. He was charged with um, filing a false electoral form, mm. which is quite a serious charge. Mm. So basically, the politicians, when they um, after they have an election, they have to pr- show where all their money came from. Mm. For good reason, because otherwise it's weird if you get elected. And he, for example, uh, was he lied about money he'd received from the Sky City Casino. And it would be weird if he got voted in and then um, gave all, this, like, all these benefits to Sky Sky City Casino. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So it's like that. It's fine to receive money from Sky City Casino. You've just got to make sure you tell people when you're open about it. So is that why they were trying to build like a stadium at Sky City? Was that because they swapped money? Well, or? that's what that's what people sometimes say. So the big one was um, uh, Kim.com. And I feel quite sorry for Kim.com because he gave apparently $50,000 to John Banks to support his campaign. And he could have bought a lot of polar fleeces and skivvies <laughs> with that. He could have downloaded a lot of illegal movies for $50,000. In fact, as many as he wanted because they're free. So he spent $50,000. <laughs> and I think, I think you've got to wonder, like, why does he give that money? Because I think he's trying to, like, buy a bit of political influence there. Yeah. But he gave fifty grand, and apparently, according to today's verdict, 
um, Banksy took that money and decided to try and claim it was anonymous on his form, claim he didn't know where the money came from, so that people wouldn't know he was associated with um, Kim.com. That's a bit sneaky, eh? Yeah. That's real sneaky. So he didn't want anyone to know that they were friends, it's but it, at the same time he wanted that money. It's the equivalent of taking a 600 mil Coke from a kid at the tuck shop who buys it to you, if you're the cool kid, yeah, 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 yeah. and an up-and-coming kid who wants to be your friend buys your 600 mil Coke, <laughs> and then someone's like, oh, where'd you get a Coke from? And you go, I don't know, I just found it. Yeah. And the guy who just bought you the Coke is standing there like, I bought you that Coke so we could be friends in the future, and now you're saying that you don't even know who I am. It's, it's like, this sounds like when I try and ask Guy to go out for dinner with me, he never comes. <laughs> this is busy. not true. That is not, well, she's we're, never we're, invited. We're, and Guy goes, just in, get me a doggy bag and bring it to work. And when we're in public, he, he pretends I'm not there. The weird bit out of all of this is that John Banks is now facing prison. Yeah, that is, a, that is amazing he as well. He is not going to have a no, no one does, but he, him especially is not going to have a good time in prison. John Bax was quite um, diplomatic, though. Obviously, he was disappointed and gutted by it. But when he came out of court, he um, he, he used the quote um, from he said uh, he said, "There's a wonderful 1930s song onto every life, some rain must fall." Um, he also did a great meme on his Twitter <laughs> that was a meme that says, "What doesn't kill you?" and it had a mouse that was dead in a mouse trap. And then the <laughs> bottom half of the meme says, "Makes you stronger," and the mouse is like. Lifting weights with the mouse trap, and that was John Max's tweet. Is this real? Yes, it's true. I saw someone. Re- I saw it. Two thousand work fourteen. A terrible world. John Banks is guilty. Fair enough. Guy Sharon and Clint on the edge. What are the worst sporting team names you've ever heard in your life? My mate's on the team that has an absolute shocker. The Black Cox. That was the New Zealand badminton team. That was a bad one. I was hoping no one would ever mention that. They were never actually called that, but that is a shocking idea for the badminton team. <laughs> they were called that. They, were they called, weren't. They were called they that. They were not called that. You had that argument with someone that was on that team about a month ago. Yeah, they were. They were called that. They were. What are the worst sports team names <laughs> you've ever heard in your life? Because there are so many in New Zealand at the moment, it's almost making me angry. I'll give you a bad team name. Okay. Guys, Sharon and Clint. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha ha, what a silly team. That actually that actually wasn't too bad, to be honest. It's like we didn't put any effort into thinking that name up whatsoever. Well, I did. I, my, the first name I thought of was Sharon, Guy and Clint, but I got whammied in between you. <laughs> I'm going to sandwich of you guys. No, don't say that. Don't say that. I've got a friend who um, plays for a rugby league team in Christchurch, and they wear Auckland Warriors or the New Zealand Warrior jerseys as their, um, as their uniform, mm. but they're called the Sex Warriors. <laughs> and that, it doesn't even make sense. They're just a bunch of immature dudes. That is so <laughs> But bad. I was thinking about there's so many names out there that are absolutely appalling. The New Zealand men's basketball team, because I just saw the other day when uh, uh, Stephen Adams decided he couldn't play for them. <laughs> the New Zealand men's basketball team is called the Tall Blacks. Yeah, because they're That's tall appalling. and it's like the All Blacks, but they're the tall ones. Yes, yeah. but Sharon, what is basketball largely dominated by? <laughs> tall people. Tall people. People of what ethnic persuasion? I don't know. I don't look at their. I usually look at their sneakers. It's just the worst name of all time. <laughs> you guys are racist. <laughs> We're not racist. Do you know it is racist though? There's an American football team in the NFL called the Washington Redskins, and it wasn't until I heard a, a, a Chris Rock routine that I realised where he's like. Man, the Washington Redskins, that's a racial slur. Like, you can't, if you go on the street, you cannot say, you cannot call an Indian dude a Redskin. No. That's like a horrific thing to say. No, yeah. And Chris Rock said it's like calling a team the New York N words. Like, you just can't yeah. do it. It wow. cannot be done. Um, another shocking team name, the Canterbury Crusaders. I'm just going to come out and say Are it. Are you just saying that because you always lose to the Crusaders? I'm from Nelson, mate. We're in the Crusaders territory. No, I'm you're not. saying that because the Crusaders. I am. What yeah, do you mean? Nelson's part yeah, of Crusaders. Yeah, you're in the territory, mate. Hey. You're just like the special cousins we have to associate with. Are you kidding? Nelson used to have a game every year, and when the horses would run around to that music, I started crying one time. <laughs> Doesn't it make you cry? We used to get a. To get a um, Sharon, you're from Timaru. That's just as bad. <laughs> we also. Uh, we, Timaru didn't get a game because yes, the stadium did. was too crap. We sometimes got a game and we also had the horses, but no one cried because we weren't pussies. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to piss off some um, some Cantabs here, but the Canterbury Crusaders is actually a bad sports team. I name. think it's a great name it, because you're in for the Crusade. No, but it's named after the Crusades which is a religious massacre where between one and three million 
people were killed. It's like having a team called the Hamilton, the Hamilton Holocaust. It's because we kill people on the rugby field. It's a shocking. But one of our other um, terrible sports team <laughs> names, text in the 3343, the Auckland Blues is a shocker. It sounds like they're suffering from depression. Shamel, what's yours? Oh, we, we call the, the mullet men. The but, mullet men. The mullet men, great team name. Do you all have mullets? No, the funny thing is only one bloke has a mullet. Uh, <laughs> Disappointing. Every, every time another team rocks up, they're expecting, because we live up north, expecting a team full of bogan white dudes with mullets, <laughs> but there's only one. Oh, what a letdown. <laughs> that is classic. Good on you, Shamal. Is it Shamal or Shamal? I love, I love when people... Oh. <laughs> No, he doesn't know. No, okay. So. I think it's Shamo. <laughs> We've had some shockers come in, um, mainly from Hamilton. Um, <laughs> Jason from good old dirty Hamilton, as he says it, says my friend's netball team name is called the Multiple Scorgasms. That's actually oh, pretty Lord. good. That's pretty good. Um, it's probably just, it's from, a pun. It's probably a bunch of dudes that can't achieve. Anyway, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So the West Hamilton football team, the f- football club, their women's team is the Fuzzy Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> Their men's team is the Floppy Noodles. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Katrina, what's your terrible team name? Hi, um, I was in two indoor soccer teams. One was called uh, the Holy Shih Tzu, the, the dog. Yep. And um, one was the Prawn the prawn Stars. The pra- <laughs> I've, There's quite a few people that have called the Prawn Stars. It's quite terrible. What sport is it? Indoor soccer. Indoor soccer and your prawns. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. I don't get it. Chang, Chang sent us an urgent message. Ask them what sport. Ask them what sport. (laughs) I don't think we got the joke. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Good value. (laughs) First of all, Jack, how old are you? I'm 12. 12. And what's your terrible team name? Um, My dad, he he plays indoor netball and his team is called Full of Gas. (laughs) Full of Gas? um, and, yeah, they work at the hospital as anaesthetic technicians. Oh, <laughs> we thought it was because they had gas. It works in so many ways. <laughs> Genius. Yeah, but nobody knows that they're anaesthetic technicians, so it's, pr- it's pretty awkward. Yeah, so you just need, like, a bunch of stink old men, right, Jay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, what, do, do you, awesome. like, do you stand on the sideline and just make fart noises? No. Oh, you should. <laughs> you should, No, because that would be dumb. That's what Good I'd idea. do. Good idea, though. Oh, we'll work on it, Jack. He's, he's, he's humouring you. Oh, huh? Hannah, what is your terrible team name? Um, Sexy Scarfies. The Sexy Scarfies. Are you sexy? Yeah. Are you sexy, though? Um, I don't know. Don't I don't pause. know whether to say or not. <laughs> Be like, yeah, bro, we're, we're like sexy ass. Are you Scarfies? Are you actually Scarfies? No. <laughs> I don't even know what Scarfie is. This is what, what do you mean you don't know what Scarfie is? Are you from Dunedin? Um, yeah, but I, I don't know what it is. It's the so, it's it's a name it's a colloquial name for um for students. Oh okay. Well yeah, I'm not a student but the rest of the team are. Okay. okay. I guess that's probably You're a sexy Scarfie's no, friend then. She's a question, she's a questionably sexy non Scarfie. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Nailed it. <clears throat> All right, good. Too much fun on this Too conversation. Too much fun. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the edge. It is time to play one of our favourite games because it means we get to shut up Guy Williams for a wee bit. It's called What's In Guy's Mouth. I can't believe you guys went to the length and you cared about this segment enough to make such a professional intro. I'm really Thank impressed. Thank you. Okay, so I'm about to give you how this works if you've never played before is we're going to put something in Guy's mouth. He has to try and tell you what it is with it still in his mouth. It's the stupidest thing You in the can world. try and guess by calling on 0800 The Edge and the winner today will get a double pass to go and see 22 Jump Street at the movies, which is going to be in cinemas on the 12th of June. And here Why it is. Why punch me in the face? I can, do you want me to do that first? <laughs> I, I totally can. Give me the I'll cup. Just, you, don't, you don't know what it is that's going in your mouth yet. You've just, you're just looking oh, at it now. God. Fill it up. Fill it up. Fill up that big gob. This is disgusting. You might have to dig it out. Put as much as possible in there. He's filling his mouth up. Okay. <laughs> now say what it is. <laughs> what? Okay. Say it, say again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you think you know what guy just said, call us on 0800 The Edge or text us at 3 <laughs> Can you please give out the edge phone number? <laughs> <laughs> One more time. Watching Guy's mouth? 
Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. We're playing a wonderful game right now, which requires Guy Williams to be quiet, which is amazing. Uh. It's called What's In Guy's Mouth. Okay, Guy, you've had it in your mouth. You tried to take it out. You shoved it back in because you're a good sport. What is in your mouth? Okay. We don't know. <laughs> Try not you... to spray it everywhere, Let, mate. Let's see what's in your say mouth. It, say it. Don't spray it. It looks like it's raining. Um, Billy, what do you think is in Guy's mouth? Marmite and peanut butter. Is no. It... Oh, sorry. Guy's going to tell you. Let Guy answer. Sorry, sorry about that, Billy. Patrick, what do you think is in Guy's mouth? Uh, crunchy peanut butter. No! <laughs> okay, no, it's not crunchy peanut butter. What about Kirsten? What's in Guy's mouth? Is it Marmite? Oh, 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 oh. So we've had, hang on, Kirsten, we've had... Excuse me, no efforts. Marmite and peanut butter, and then we had peanut butter, and now we've had Marmite. Oh. None of the above. Can you top yourself up, mate? You're getting a bit too audible. Put a oh. bit more in. Put a bit more in, please. It, it sounds like it's melting. He's getting the shakes. Okay, one last time. What oh. is it? Oh. <laughs> okay, you're vomiting. Not to- oh, oh god. Oh, please don't do that. It'll make me sick. Please don't do that. We've got the last caller now. Chanel, what is in Guy's mouth? A mouthful of sugar. No. <laughs> uh, it's coming out in slime. <laughs> Guy, what thank w- you. Well done. You won the worst <laughs> radio competition in the world. Well done. Congratulations. I hope you're all proud of yourselves, Sharon and Clint. Well done. Oh, that just made me reach. Um, congratulations. Oh, please stop doing that. Um, congratulations, Chanel. <laughs> it was Chanel. your idea. You put I, it in there. I, I forgot that it would turn into that. Um, you have won a double pass to go and see 22 Jump Street at the movies. It's in cinemas, on, cinemas on the 12th of June. Have a good time. Uh, thanks. Will do. Uh, that is another edition of What's what? In Guys Mouth. Boo. <laughs> Boo to that. That I, was disgusting. I can't wait for next week. Oh, God. When it's gonna, if you're listening next week, just remember this. Next week, it's going to be sausages. <laughs> Just, now people will come back and listen next week to play. Guy, Sharon and Clint. On the bloody edge. We have this week's Ask Me Anything, and it is going to be a good one as well. We've got a real-life politician in the studio. Do you a want to real-life one? Do you as opposed to those fake ones we've had in previous. Well, will we call John Banks a real-life politician? We've never had John Banks. <laughs> no, well, that's what I'm saying. He wouldn't uh. be here because he's on a real-life one. <laughs> he's a real bad one. Too soon. Too soon? All right. We've got Jacinta... Oh, just, is it just... Jacinda Alden in the studio. Jacinda, I've been telling you all afternoon it's Jacinda Ardern. Ardern. Shivers, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> God. And you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. Anything, anything, anything. Welcome to AMA. Today in the studio, we have Labour... Member of Parliament, the wonderful, the amazing Jacinda Ardern! girl. I'm nervous. <laughs> oh, don't well, be nervous. Welcome in. Welcome, welcome back. In. Thank you. The last time we had you here at the Edge was when Chang defaced your billboard and drew a moustache on you. And then I got to deface his face. Yes. And yeah. you, you did. You that made sounded it real bad. You made it look better. He's never fully recovered either. <laughs> well, it was a permanent marker. He's probably still got marks on his <laughs> So, So this is um, Ask Me Anything. Do you promise to put your hand on a Bible and swear that you'll answer the whole truth, the, all the truth and nothing but the truth? Yeah, my evasive answers will be truthful. <laughs> 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 and if you're at home and you have always wanted to ask a member of parliament a question, then you're more than welcome to. I've just asked the dumbest questions anyone could ask, and she, just and it didn't even make me feel stupid. The first, even, no, just, the, just everyone else in the room. That was the first question we wanted to ask. Were, uh, 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 ask how do you pronounce your last name? Ardern or Arden? I take any variation. Yeah, that's an improvement on Dick. <laughs> <laughs> But my nana always used to say it was Ardern. Ardern, but okay. There's another. There's a national MP who's my cousin, um, who's who's an Ardern as well, but he <laughs> pronounces it differently. Is, who's your cousin? Who's an MP? Shane, the dude that drove up the steps of Parliament in his messy Ferguson. Unbelievable! Oh, yeah. And so you sit on opposite sides yeah. of the house. Yeah. Is that awkward? A little bit. Unbelievable. <laughs> we don't. Uh, we're not. We're not a close family. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an AMA, and ask me anything with Jacinda Ardern. The phone lines are open to you now on 0800 The Edge. If you've got a question, you can text into 3343. Can I kick it off with a question now? Do it. Yep. Do you want to be Prime Minister? No. No? No. Why not? Have you seen that job? Awful. 
Yeah? Awful job. Like, not now, not ever? No. Really? No, no do you, desire. Do you no. think New Zealand's ready for a female Prime Minister? <laughs> we had a good had trial two. run for nine years. Good, it, yep, was a tri- yep. it was a trick question. I was just throwing it out so when, so I when, thought you were serious. I was like, you egg, we've had two. <laughs> Even I know that. <laughs> So, so when when because um, your name did come up when they change leaders, does that how does that make you feel? Is yeah, I think I think I was polling there on about twelve percent, something like that. <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah. Yep, Dad was proud. Dad was real <laughs> proud. I would have voted for you because I think you're nice, and I'm one of those stupid people that that takes that into account when they vote for someone. <laughs> the person that they like. I, I am a, um, a an AMA question from me. Is it true you used to be a Mormon? That is that is true. That blows yeah. my mind. Yeah. Yep. But what? you're no longer a Mormon. No. I have no idea about the Mormon religion. You threw away that Mormon god. I, I tasted whiskey. What can I say? <laughs> what can I say? You, Fair I, enough. I read this about you in the paper, so you are a big whiskey fan, right? I a bit am. of a whiskey connoisseur. Um, drink sensibly and moderately. Yes, I am. Absolutely. Say, <laughs> say yeah, nah, as Guy says. What's your favourite um, type of whiskey? Oh, always, always a single malt, um, a Highland Glendronic. That's wow. probably one of my wow. favorites. Wow. Although, although uh, I've always been, never pick a favorite because <laughs> you rule out so many options. Mm, that is the true. <laughs> and if you have like two or three, then the others taste just as good anyway, don't they? Okay. What? <laughs> Alan, <laughs> what's your question for Jacinda? Jacinda, there's a thin Lizzie ad on TV with about five different girls showing on it. Is one of them you? <laughs> Are you on a thin Lizzie ad? Uh, uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> but I'm so glad you think I have thousands of luminous spheres. <laughs> Thank you. What a great question. Great the, question. The phone lines are still open. You can call through now, 0800 The Edge, or text your question to 3343. And I'd like to thank him for asking a question that was a little bit sillier than mine. But did he think I was the before or after? That's what I want to know. <laughs> and you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. In the studio, we have Labour MP Jacinda Ardern. Jacinda, from the text machine, we're doing an AMA. Who is the politician you most admire? It could be living or dead, wherever. Um, I really like Norman Kirk. In fact, my first cat was called Norm. Wow. Oh, that's yep. awesome. I didn't name him. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a question. Who out of every male in Parliament, if you had to... Oh, not a shag question. This is a shag question. No, no, no if you have to marry, so spend the rest of your life with one other MP, who would it be? Oh, the rest of my life with one other MP. Yep. Oh, Grant Robertson. He's gay. Yeah. Oh, that'll be easy. Can I give you a variation on this <laughs> Good question? Answer. Are you familiar with the game Shoot, Root, Marry? Oh, I am. Shoot, Root, Marry, John Key, Bill English, or Jerry Brownlee? Oh, I'm shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad answer. All right, we're going to hit the phones now. Jason, what's your question? Yeah, kia ora. I'm Jacinda. Kia ora, Jason. New Zealand's arguably foxiest MP. <laughs> Low I'm bar, assuming. Jason, though, isn't it? Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah, I'm assuming you're inundated with romantic and sexual offers. And it's just <laughs> of, um, people that come into MPs' offices, that, you know, that must be happening. Mm. Um, so, is that the case? And if so, what's the creepiest offer you've had? Um... It's an AMA, just well, no, Sorry. it is. I've, no, and I'm going to answer. I'm going to answer. Last election, someone left a uh, a drunken voicemail on oh. my office phone saying that um, if I came round and mm, um, serviced them in some form, uh, family show that that they would vote for me. Wow! Oh so as a result, do you feel? Uh, uh, I rang you- them back. <laughs> they left their number. And what did you say? Oh. I told them it was against the law. It's called treating. <laughs> oh. and Jason's like, at least you got my message, eh, hey, Jason? Yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 thanks for that. I'll, um, I'll try and, I'll try and r- lift the bar a little bit. This is from Jade, aged 11. She asked in the text machine, do you think we can get a free lunch at school, brackets, a nice lunch? Well... Actually, good question. We are going to put food in schools, but that's that's about that's a child poverty thing. You might be asking whether or not we're going to put mince pies and chips yeah. and stuff in for free. So just a it minimum. Different. We're trying to get nutrition into schools. Yeah. Can yeah, I get burger fuel at school and then I'll vote for you? <laughs> By the way, I'm not 18. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn, what's your question? Hi. Hey, um, Justin, does your mother live in Morrinville? <laughs> or your parents? Yes. Uh oh. Yep. Yep. They do. Yeah. Um, 
there's a picture of you on their wall, eh? Do you like that picture? Someone painted it or, or drew it, didn't they? Yes, there is a picture on... Have you been in my family home? <laughs> yeah, I've been in your family home. Oh, your your getting... mum, like, told me all about you, and I didn't know who you were, and then <laughs> and then I kept on seeing you on TV and stuff. This is amazing. Glenn, oh. Glenn, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Did Jacinda's mum try and set you up? <laughs> no, 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 no. This was, like, a few years ago. Oh, right. I, I can't help but feel like Glenn is steering towards a real bad your mum joke somewhere along the line the, as well. You were the roof oh, of the right, accidentally set our house on fire. But, really? yeah, <laughs> that's about it, really. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Glenn, yes, she does have a picture. Oh, he asked if he liked the painting. Do you like it? Uh, I think I think I know the one you're thinking that you're meant to. I'm looking a bit earnest in it, eh? Um, it's the one that some, someone... This is getting this together. is getting too weird. One and a weirder one from the text machine is John Key a reptilian shapeshifter. It, can, it cannot be either proven or disproven. <laughs> so good answer. Uh, it is an AMA. We're going to keep the lines open. Your last chance to ask some questions of Jacinda Ardern, MP for the Labour Party, has is up else next. Been in my house. <laughs> <laughs> and you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody, anything, anything, anything. We're doing an AMA right now with Jacinda Ardern from the Labour Party. This is your last chance to ask you anything. However, you actually do an AMA of your own, don't you? I do, Can yeah. you tell us how that works? Oh, basically, anyone can jump on my Facebook page or on Twitter, hashtag Ask Jacinda, um, and they can ask me anything. So if we haven't picked up your question today, feel free to send me a tweet and uh, or on Facebook and I'll get back to you. You're very open and like ready to answer pretty much any question, so you're good for an AMA. Yeah, yeah, perhaps that makes me incredibly stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Quite vulnerable, perhaps, but it hasn't gone badly perhaps. yet. We've got a few quick oh, fire time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few uh, quick fire texts that have come through as well. Um, are you wor- not worried that Kim dot com is a limelight crazy nut job? <laughs> Wow, God, I'm kind of worried if people vote for for that. If that's what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm still waiting to see why he's really there doing doing what he's doing in politics. That is true. Mm. Someone else has texted in. Do you personally think that no interest student loans should be kept, or if the interest should be added on? No, I think we should keep them. It's about making uni accessible. I've yeah, got definitely. A, another question from the text machine. What's your take on marijuana legalisation? Well, I think it's time we had a public debate about it, actually. Yeah. Now that we've been having all of the discussion about, um, you know, a synthetic drugs, we've now got a system where if they're proven safe, they can be sold. So I think it's probably time we had a debate about wider drug policy as well at mm. the same time. Okay, cool. That's a good yep. point. Another one. Is John Key a know-it-all a-hole in person? <laughs> <laughs> Their words, not mine. But. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some calls on the phone as well. Nathan, what's your question for Jacinda? Hey, Jacinda, I just wanted to know, do you hang out with any MPs outside of Parliament? Yeah, yeah, Labour ones. Um, can't say I have too many beersies with the National Party ones. <laughs> but, um, yeah, people like Grant Robertson and Chris Hipkins and, and Annette King is awesome. She's like the auntie everyone wants in their life. She's awesome. Yep. Got some pals. What would happen if you did hang out with someone from National? Would that be like someone from Neighbours hanging out with someone on Home and Away? <laughs> like, it's just, you just it can't probably, do it? No, it'd be a bit more boring than that, but it's I guess it's kind of similar. It could be. All right, Laura. Oh, God, Laura. See you later, mate. Um, Paul, what's your question? Hi. Uh, yeah. Jacinda, it's Paul, your cousin. Oh, no. <laughs> Amazing. This is Hi, good. Paul. How's it going? I, this is the most nervous I've been today. I'm going good, Paul. That's great. Are you going to ask me is, if I'm going to get you an awesome present for Christmas? Yes, there's that. But my <laughs> question is, who's your favourite cousin, me or Crystal? <laughs> what is this? What is this? <laughs> Worst question. Can you be first equal? Uh, no, it just doesn't quite I'm cut not it. kidding, guys. This is actually my cousin, Paul, who <laughs> um, I think that guy you might have met, he was on the John and Ben show once. Um, why was he on the John and Ben show? <laughs> he filmed my cousin crashing into a tree. Oh, amazing. Oh, good on you, Paul. For the listeners, my cousin <laughs> is three years old. Oh, is that the little kid that crashed <laughs> into oh, the tree? You're That's my family. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. You're, you're, you're YouTube's worst dad of all time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that answers the question, Paul. Crystal's uh, Jacinda's favourite cousin. Oh, bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> and Hayden, what's your question? So, you're single? Uh, <laughs> we had to end on that one, but it doesn't ask me anything. My mum is so happy that got asked live on air just now. 
Yes. Oh, you know, <laughs> like a beer wouldn't go astray. <laughs> oh, what? Maybe what? it would. Give your number out, bro. Give your number out. Keep on going. You're going well. <laughs> I, I think she's into you. Just keep, keep working on it. <laughs> oh, I'd, I'd be down there. Oh, yeah. I've got okay, well, that was a great pickup, Hayden. Well done. Just, Jacinda, before we let you go, I've got a genuine question. Do you worry about, when you're in a situation like this, because you get asked questions all the time, do you constantly worry about saying the wrong thing and screwing up and getting on the news? Like it happens so often to politicians. Yes. Is yeah. it a, is it, have, you, have you screwed up? But what's the worst thing, what's the worst mistake you've ever made? Oh, my goodness. I, it'd be really hard to pinpoint one. one of my earliest, but I don't want to repeat it. Yeah, repeat it. You've got to do it. You know, we, we all learn from our I mistakes. I relive the horror. I was in quite a serious interview, and someone asked me what I wanted to be when I was little. And the first thing that came to mind, when I was really little, yeah. really mm. little, the first job I can ever remember wanting to do, I wanted to be a clown. Aww. And confessing that on to Paul Holmes probably was a mistake. How, why was that a mistake? <laughs> that, was the, that was the pussiest answer of all time. I was all excited about something crazy. No, I'm not going to repeat anything good. So, oh, okay, I'm okay. Gonna, I'm, I'm going to Google it. <laughs> our, I'm going to Google Our guest today for Ask Me Anything has been Jacinda Ardern from the Labour Party. Final question before you leave. And I'm going to look you straight in the eye and so are the cameras so we can see if you're telling the truth. Do you think that Labour can win the election this Absolutely. year? Absolutely. Is she Look lying? at that eye contact. Is she lying? Is she Continuous. nervous? I do not. I do not believe you, Jacinda. <laughs> what? But good luck. You guys have got a lot of work to do because you're a long way behind. You're a doubter so, and a hater. So go, I'm not a hater. <laughs> I tell you what. If um if you can put in place national cheeseburger day, babes, I'm there. <laughs> Jacinda, I do. Good, ladies and gentlemen. No. Thank you so much. What is- and you can ask anybody. Go ahead and ask anybody. Yeah, you can ask anybody. On the moment with JJ, Mike and Dom, they are doing a competition called KP for Me. And you can register for this on theedge.co.nz. What they do is that either JJ, Mike or Dom have to do a ridiculous challenge. And if they complete this challenge, then you could be winning two spots on the Edge guest list to go and see Katy Perry. And if you're not from Auckland, we will fly you up to Auckland, all thanks to Air New Zealand's grab seat. So this morning, oh, sorry, yesterday morning, you would have heard Dom had to jump out of a birthday cake at a mechanic's office and sing Birthday by Katy Perry. Which was extremely disturbing. Did you see that video? I didn't see the video. I just heard it. He's, he can't sing. No, but the video is very disturbing. So watch it now on theedge.co.nz. And this morning, it was between JJ and Mike to get full arm casts on both arms. And JJ lost. And we've got some audio of J- JJ at lunch today trying to drink some soup or eat some soup with no arms. <laughs> Can you make can you make a bit less noise with the soup? Sorry. <laughs> it's what happens when you suck, suck it up with a straw, Dominic. You should try it sometime. You try eating with no freaking elbows. People are looking at you funny. Eating with no, don't Just, worry about her, she's armless. <laughs> so she has to last 24 hours, and if she can make it, then she will get to send someone to Katy Perry. I saw the photo, and I thought her arms were going to be like, um, like prized outwards, like she's ready to take off, like she's a bird or something. They're not, they're down by her side, so I was like, ugh, easy. But then, do this with me right now, put your arms down by your sides. Unless you're driving. And imagine that your elbows don't work, your shoulders still work, but your elbows don't work, and then try and Feed yourself. Try and try and get something up to your up to your mouth without using your elbows. <laughs> try and do anything. Try and use she your phone. She wouldn't even be able to wipe her own butt. To use your oh, phone. Oh, maybe she could do that actually. You have to hold it way out in front of you. Could you wipe your butt? Try and wipe your butt right now. Hang I'm trying. I know I can reach. I can no, reach my hand goes too much lower my, than my butt. If I thrust forward, I can reach. Really? Yeah. Reach I can enough touch to it. reach this enough is... to be sure you've got it all clean. Yeah, and if you couldn't you couldn't make a fist either. You'd have to have two hands. Because your hands are like gloved, so it'd be like it'd be like starting a fire with some sticks. <laughs> I don't understand that. <laughs> You're a dude. We, we've had an amazing show today, and we've had some lows, and we just keep on plumbing the depths. <laughs> Guy Sharon and Clint. Itch. Last night on the Paul Henry show, um, uh, he had a, a photo bomb where a woman got into one of his live crosses and said something very, very rude. We've beeped it to the best of our abilities, but this was it. That blade wouldn't make a very good capital on the basis that next to bloody nobody lives there. It's a f***ing pussy. Now, what was that? 
That was a rude lady. <laughs> we'll delete that before we play the program. I love that uh, when Paul Henry goes, oh, that was a rude lady. You said, um, you said that... Uh, we beeped it to the best of our abilities, but we didn't beep out the, the P word there, so we didn't quite do that well. Chang doesn't concern, consider the P word to be a swear word. He it, considers it lunch. It was, oh, no, 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 no. I, well, I don't even know which way you're making that joke. Is that a racist joke yeah, or a sexual ra- joke? No, it was racist. Either way, it's oh, not it good. Oh, it be sexual yuck, as well. I didn't even think about that. Oh, anyway, Chang is dying against the glass now with embarrassment. <laughs> We will continue. Chang, which con- would you prefer? Would you prefer it had racial or sexual connotations? Which one do you want? <laughs> I didn't mean it like that at G- all. Guys, we've got to, we've got to move on because we've got a job to do. We've, we've got, got, to- got to call the woman who ruined Paul Henry's show with her terrible swear words. Through the powers of the text machine, we've managed to get hold of her phone number. <clears throat> so let's call her right now. Just see what was going on with her last night. Hello, is that Rose? It, it is, speaking. Hello, Rose. It's Guy Sharon and Clint calling from The Edge. Hello, how are you? Good. Uh, question. Were yes. you on the Paul Henry show last night? I was. Were you the person being asked the questions or were you the swearing one? <laughs> I, was, I, I was the naughty one, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I contacted The Edge because I saw that my friend was speaking to you guys today. <laughs> For those, for those who missed it, your friend did call in and she defended you and said, you're not as bad as you seemed on TV last night. <laughs> oh, I think I am, but... Oh, so you've come... If, you've, if, she, if she wants to be to differ, nice. So you've contacted us to dispute what she's saying and say, no, I'm not a good person and you're going to discredit people from West Auckland. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot more to come. So what do you mean there's a lot more to come? It's going to get worse. What do you mean? What's going to get worse? Are you going to go stalk Paul Henry? Henry? About as bad as it gets. So, so Rose, um, talk us through what happened. You were you were you were at the boxing, and you saw yeah, the interview. We were, we were kindly gifted some tickets last minute, um, and we kind of went along and stuff. And they approached my friend to do the Paul Henry thing live. That ended up happening. The rest is history. What what, what was that is. Why did you decide to do it? I kind of got eased on by my boyfriend. Your boyfriend? The silent partner, yes. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, and so I um, take it you're, because you called us, you're proud of it? I, I do like it, yeah. It's awesome. It's a good feeling. I woke up today happy, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> w- w- were, you, were you drunk when you did it? No, not at all. What? That is me. Like she said, you know, it, it's in character. That's, at, that's who I am, and... <laughs> It was fun. You do it for a laugh. Okay, all right. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you say to the haters out there who say you're an idiot? I, I don't have any feelings towards those people. Mum's pretty proud as well. She's, you know. Your mum's proud? <laughs> Good on yeah, you. Well, hey. Yeah, you've got you've got to know me and my situation to understand it and live life by the day and it. Every hey, day is different. All right. Hey, um, good to talk to you, and thank you for not um, spilling your filth on our show. We appreciate that. Not a problem. Thanks <laughs> for your time. Okay. See okay, you. thanks. Bye. Bye. A New Zealand legend, everybody. That is Rose, the Facebook sensation of the day. Guy, Sharon, and Clint. On the edge. This morning I woke up, and there was a tweet from the uh, Tasman Police Department, I was like, "Oh, that's pretty crack up." Tasman Police Department, my home, my hometown, has a um, uh, has a Twitter account. I wonder what sort of mean jokes they're doing. Turns out they're tweeting that um, is it Anna or Anja A N J A? How do you pronounce that? Anya. Anya. A- Anya Schultz, uh, a woman was missing. And uh, I was like, oh my God, there's nothing worse than when a person's missing because it almost always, always, always turns out bad. And of course, I, just thought, I was like, oh, she's probably dead. You know, it started an international manhunt that's been in the news all day. Did it go international? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Interpol was the one who actually set it off because it was her European family that was worried about her. Wow. She hadn't been heard of since February the 2nd. Turns out, guys, she's been fine. She's fine. She's Where been is found. She? She's in Central Otago picking fruit. Oh, God. How great is that? Like, what a happy ending. Like, don't you wish that all those other missing cases yeah. would, would turn out like that? And it's so funny that that's just the, the age we live in now with um, cell phones and Facebook and stuff, that you're always in commu- communication. So if someone just doesn't check their Facebook for ages, yeah. you just assume, uh-oh. Uh-oh, there's something wrong. They've been murdered. If someone hasn't put a selfie up on Instagram for a bit... 
call the authorities. I, and, uh, I always think that, like, oh, they're angry at me, and then I go through this. Something's happened to them after mm. they're like, angry at me, but they just haven't replied. She's a 31-year-old woman. She was unaware that anyone was looking for her, and, and she's... She's living in central Otago, having a great time. Quite amazing that you uh, were unaware there was an international manhunt on about you. <laughs> I think that's kind of cool. Like, not cool that that happened, but kind of cool that she just didn't use the internet and stuff for a while. I'd love to do that. You do, you do it for a holiday. Like, when you go to Mexico, it could be a good idea. Just yeah, leave us I will. a note to tell us. I did it, um, I did it when yeah. I, went to, I went to the islands last year and uh, just got off Twitter, and it was actually, yeah, really good for oh myself. Oh, my God, it's going to backfire on you, though, if you get in trouble, like on Taken, and you're like, guys, if you don't, you're not going to hear from me for the next month um, Yeah, because I'm going off the grid. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So just don't be frightened. I'm fine. And then the first day you get there, something real bad happens, but no one bothers to look Why for you. Why are you saying that to me? Because you told us not to. I'm just... Still do some... It's all right, because I'll be with my husband, so we've yeah. got a pact that we're going to die on the same day anyway, so we may <laughs> as well do it together in Mexico. <laughs> what day? We don't know, just as long as we die on the same day like the lying. notebook. I reckon he's going to bail on that last day. He's going to be like, I'm out. <laughs> oh, Amazing. He'd, he'd only bail on me because he can't live without me. Guy Sharon and Clint. Edge. Thank you. That's the podcast. We're finished for today. Last chance this week um, to upload your nude pics, by the way, for the Nude Blacks competition. Um, cover yourself with a rugby ball, do it with a mate, and you could come to Dunedin if you hashtag it with Edge Nude Blacks and put it on Instagram. We'll take you down there on Air New Zealand, uh, grab a seat, party plane, and you'll come with me, actually, and go and watch the game, the All Blacks game. And see some bottoms. Are oh, you all see some bottoms? Because we're going to watch the Nude Blacks game too. Thank you to our special guest today, Jacinda Ardern. Thank you to um, Clint for having a good attitude. And thank you f- to Sharon for being a beautiful princess. Thank you to li- for you to listening as well. See you. Good, good night. Oh, good good nice evening. compliments to thank, finish with, Thank guy. you to Guy for um, being here. Would you like the last laugh? Okay. <laughs> oh, whoopee! Guy Sharon and Clint podcast. I like it.